Hello everyone. In the previous lecture, we were discussing about the poly polynomial solution forms to the biharmonic equation and at the end we were discussing about uh, generating solutions of practical interest uh, in some real problems. So, uh, what I meant to say was that uh, suppose, so, uh, so when we were talking about the second degree terms, we were only considering uh, in the previous lecture, we only considering these kinds of second degree terms and we saw that why, well, uh, it, these uh, did produce some kinds of non-zero stresses and was, uh, it was fairly interesting. But what I meant was, uh, suppose we had some combinations of loads which would, uh, which would not be individually satisfied by only this cubic terms by, or by only uh, this second degree terms, what then? Could we possibly combine them? Okay, so that is the question. So it turns out that there is indeed such a principle which we can follow. So this is the principle of superposition, which very much holds true here. Okay, so the principle of superposition. So suppose for our biharmonic equation del for phi equal to 0, we find one solution which is uh, let us say given by phi 1 and suppose we have another solution which is phi 2. Now let us say phi 1 is of some second degree and let us say as a specific example phi 2 this is of third degree. What the principle of superposition tells us is that because our biharmonic equation is a linear equation okay so please do not confuse yourself with the degree and the order of this biharmonic equation it is true very much that the order okay the order of the derivatives present in this biharmonic equation are fourth fourth order but the individual terms are very much linear we do not have any nonlinear terms in this biharmonic equation okay because of this linear nature of this governing differential equation, the biharmonic equation, it is very much possible to construct solutions. Uh, okay, so, so given a, a new uh, practical situation, it is very much possible to combine one solution with another solution to produce a new solution. Okay, and probably this solution is what is going to satisfy the physical uh, requirements of a current of, of a of a particular problem okay so this is very much important this only works okay it only works because of the linear nature of the biharmonic equation and we will actually see examples of this kind of superposition going on when we actually solve the problems. So here we should be actually writing because of the linear, because of the linear nature of the biharmonic equation. Okay, uh, let us be absolutely clear about this. Let me go back to the previous page. So you note here that this is a fourth order derivative. This also is a fourth order derivative, of course, mixed in nature, and this is a fourth order derivative. But none of these terms are nonlinear in nature. So, for example, uh, for example, if I just uh, use the rough column here, you see this term is linear. Okay, it's fourth order, but it's linear. This term. Again, it's fourth order mixed derivatives, but it is linear. However, suppose we have a term like this del square phi del x square times del square phi del y square, then it becomes nonlinear. Okay, then it is nonlinear. Uh, it, will, it will also be nonlinear if suppose if we have uh, a term like phi multiplied with 
del square phi del x square we don't have these kinds of things but i'm just saying okay uh, from in from from general knowledge of of differential equations that this is also going to be nonlinear okay so, or suppose you have del phi del x times del phi del x that also will contribute to the nonlinearity okay we don't have those kinds of inconvenient terms everything is very much nice and linear and that is why it is possible to superpose solutions like this and this is an extremely extremely uh, powerful uh, uh, powerful principle of when we actually solve problems okay it will help us to solve many many problems of practical interest by superposing posing some of the elementary solutions that we know from very simple situations okay next another very important practical consideration is uh, is the saint venance principle so for that let, let me go to the next page many of you have already uh, come across this principle okay so the uh, saint venance principle very very important and for that let me take a concrete example so suppose we have this kind of a situation as we have already found out when we took the second degree terms okay so let me just go back to that page when we are considering the second degree terms so we had this thing okay now as a very simple special case you forget or you consider that we don't have this a11 term so let's set a11 equal to 0 a2 uh, uh, to 0 equal to 0 and let only the a02 be non zero okay so what we what we are doing is we are saying that phi let it be just a02 y square so as a result what this is going to give us is sigma xx is equal to twice a02 that's it a constant sigma yy equal to 0 and sigma xy is also going to be equal to 0 so what is this solving so uh, so it sounds a little bit weird to ask like this that we are finding a solution and then we are looking at uh, at the at the physical problem which 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 it might solve but that's that's the way to think about uh, about things when you are uh, approaching problems using the area stress function so first you find a solution and then you try to look for appropriate problems uh, which it is solving Okay, so uh, you understand that uh, the sigma x is a constant basically means that you have a situation like this. So this is your uniform loading. Okay, so perhaps if a02 is uh, is positive, then then what we have depicted through this kind of tensile nature of the loading, that's perfectly fine. However, uh, suppose instead of this, suppose instead of this, we have a more a uh, more realistic scenario which we come across often in our undergraduate studies uh, where you have this kind of a rectangular domain maybe a beam or something and where the loading is not actually applied in such a uniform nature uh, by in such a uniform manner rather it is given like this okay, this is very very common we have we have drawn this diagram innumerable times in your undergraduate days okay so this is a and like a pure tension case uh, depicted by this kind of point loading okay what then is it perhaps possible to say that the that the solution to this problem also is given by this so your immediate answer should be no okay so this problem and this problem are not exactly the same thing there is a very much a difference between a uniform loading and this kind of point loading right now the good thing here is that according to the saint venance principle so what he what he said was that yes this is for very much true that uh, this the stresses that are generated in this case and the stresses which are generated in this case they are going to be different fine but actually the difference is only going to show up only near the very very near to the point of loading so if you if you actually zoom into this zone if you zoom into this zone then you will find that certainly the stresses which are here which are actually mathematically uniform and here not uniform okay there it's going to be very high stress in this very low stress here very low stress here but suppose suppose and this is what saint venance principle okay the hurt and blood of saint venance principle is is that if you stay away from these ends okay if you stay away from these ends okay if you 
which is stay away from the ends then for all intents and purposes the 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 stress field which you will find for this kind of a problem and this kind of a problem is the same is the same as long as the loading here and the loading here they are statically equivalent okay so what i mean to say is suppose it so happens that this is some kind of a sigma xx value and this is some tension t if it happens that t is equal to sigma xx ta over this entire area okay over this entire area so if this kind of thing is true and of course this is a centric loading so that you do not uh, you do not end up with any any bending moments here okay you do not have any bending moments here uh, nor should you have any bending moments here so only then you, you can say that this case is statically equivalent to this case okay so uh, what we are saying basically is that for statically equivalent loadings the stress field is going to be the same as long as we stay away from the ends so i have written this in a in a very utilitarian fashion what i mean from uh, from the ends is what i implicitly mean from the ends here is that uh, you you stay away from those ends or from those zones where the load is being actually applied okay as long as you stay away from those zones uh, you'll be safe okay so for example if you take a cut section here suppose okay suppose here then you're good okay the stress field that you are going to have here suppose you take a cut section here and you take a cut section here they're going to be for all intents and purposes the same thing okay that's all there is to it so that's the same evidence principle now it may seem like okay this is what's what's the big deal about it but you will see that many of the solutions that we generate from our considerations of the area stress function and our notion or our and our ideas about the polynomial uh, solution forms they will be uh, they will be of this nature okay which are uh, which are not uh, which are not so commonly uh, like practically done practically done is this kind of a thing okay uh, so in order to go from a practically applied load nature to this kind of a load nature which you actually require for your uh, for your area stress function approach uh, there the missing link is this saint venans principle i hope i have been able to make myself clear so with these considerations Uh, especially about the principle of superposition which also seems quite uh, straight forward to understand but again very important and again the saint venans principle which is again at least uh, in a hand waving fashion is quite uh, intuitive to understand uh, so based on these things uh, and some clever applications of the of various combinations of this of the of the area stress functions uh, we can go on to solve some problems all right so with this i will and this part of the lecture thank you very much